The key to working Dalton's law problems is remembering that the total pressure is the sum of the partial pressures of all of the gases involved. In this particular case, we're going to be talking about one type of Dalton's law problems, which is collecting gases over water. Gases are often collected by bubbling them through water into a bottle or into a test tube or something of that type. And as the gas comes through the water, it drags water vapor with it. This is a whole lot better way of doing it than our colleagues used to do it several hundred years ago when they collected gases over mercury. Well, we won't get into that. Anyway, so the gas being collected in this case perhaps is carbon dioxide. And if that's the case, what is actually the composition of gas in the bottle? Well, the composition of the gas in the bottle is carbon dioxide, which is saturated with water vapor. And because it is saturated with water vapor, we will be able to find information we need regarding the pressure that that water vapor exerts by referring to some, to some charts that we will have available. The total pressure inside that bottle of gas is the pressure of the gas, in this case carbon dioxide, plus the pressure of the water vapor. And we very often need to know the pressure of the gas alone. Here's a problem. 340 milliliters of gas is collected over water at 20 degrees Celsius and a barometric pressure of 758 torr. We generally have to go over to the wall and read the pressure. We want to find the volume of the dry gas at the same conditions. In other words, we want to deduct from all of this the impact of the water. So what we do is we check a table of vapor pressures to find the vapor pressure of water at 20 degrees Celsius. And the vapor pressure of water that we have at 20 degrees Celsius we find to be 17.5 torr. That is assuming that the carbon dioxide, or whatever gas it is, is saturated with that water vapor. And in a saturated situation, the vapor pressure of water at 20 degrees Celsius is 17.5 torr. Here we go. We start with our 340 milliliters of gas. And we ask ourselves, OK, I've got this at a barometric pressure of 758, but that includes the water. If I subtract the pressure of the water from that, that means that the pressure of the gas is less than 758, right? So here's the expression for the pressure of the gas. It's 758 minus 17.5 torr. And we put that over 758 torr. Why do we do that? We do that because we're taking that pressure at less than 758 and we're bringing it up to 758. When we increase the pressure on a volume of gas, the volume decreases. So I have to multiply this by a factor that will decrease that volume. Now, I hope you understand that. If you don't, go back and play this portion again and make sure you get a handle on it. When you are increasing the pressure on a volume of a gas, what you're doing, if you're trying to find the volume of the dry gas at the same conditions as the volume of the wet gas, right? Well, anyway, when I calculated it, I came out with 332 milliliters. And that would be the, the volume of the dry gas at those same circumstances. I think we need to try. Now in this problem, we have 340 milliliters of gas collected over water at 20 degrees Celsius and a barometric pressure of 758 torr. Now remember that 758 torr is the sum of the vapor pressure of water and the pressure of whatever that gas is. But we want to find the volume of the dry gas at STP. In other words, we want to eliminate consideration of the moisture that's in that gas. Here we go. We start with 340 milliliters. Well, you do remember that I looked up the vapor pressure of water for you and it's 17.5 torr, yeah, in the previous problem. We start with our 340 milliliters of gas. Now, what is the pressure of the gas? Well, 
It's less than 758 torr, and we know this because we had to allow for the vapor pressure of water, and when we subtract that 17.5 torr from 758 torr, we're going to come out with something less than 758 torr, right? Yes. So we're taking it from a lower pressure to the higher pressure of standard pressure, which is 760 torr. When we increase the pressure on a volume of gas, we decrease the volume of the gas. So we must multiply this volume by a ratio of pressures that will actually cause the volume to decrease. So it's 758 minus 17.5 torr over 760 torr. And that then, when multiplied by 340, will reduce the 340. Now let's consider temperature. We have this volume of gas collected at 20 degrees Celsius. That's 293 kelvins. And we're going to take it to STP. That's 273 kelvins. And you know that when you decrease the temperature of a gas, you decrease the volume. So once again, we have to multiply this by a ratio that is going to decrease the volume. So we multiply it by 273 over 293. And when we work this out, I came out with 309 milliliters of gas. So we significantly reduced the volume of that gas, but that 309 milliliters now is dry, and it's at STP. If you get confused with this, I suppose you could use a formula. But it really would be better off for you if you could learn to do it this way. That way you could plop it into a bigger problem at some point in time without having to stop and break everything down into a series of smaller problems. Oh well, whichever way suits you is fine. Brought to you courtesy of the Chemistry Professor, offering complete chemistry courses on DVD. Visit us at our website, chemistryprofessor.com.